Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for staying. Um, <laughs> you always think if you're the last one off, people will have headed to the bar by this stage in the evening, so I'm extremely flattered that you have restrained yourselves and will be going at one of Tim's pubs later. Um, <laughs> we know the basic facts, don't we? That the European Union is a failing economic model and that the defeatist attitude of the British establishment is about managing decline. It essentially takes the view that the UK can never do as well as it did in the past, that our best days are behind us, and that all we can hope for is to shelter behind the EU's protectionist wall to keep out some of the globalist winds that will blow, and if we shelter, perhaps we will hold on to some level of prosperity. But when you look at the European Union, you see that this isn't actually true that the winds have got through that wall, they're beginning to blow down that wall, and that so many European economies are failing, and that their institutions are failing with them. Just look at France. France, Paris, riots every week, people wearing yellow jackets, and they're not George Osborne, are taking, <laughs> are taking to the streets week in, week out, in a great tradition of French opposition, to the hierarchy. Look at Italy, rejecting the orders, the rules, the commands of Brussels. But of course you would if you were Italian reject it because you've had no economic growth for 20 years. Your standard of living hasn't been getting any better. But if you're Greek, your standard of living has been crushed. Now we know all this, but we also know that actually the way to achieve prosperity is to have those key things that make a prosperous state. The rights of property, the rule of law, freedom of speech, and democracy. All of these... <laughs> all of these are essential components of success. If you take a single one of them away, you find that the others are not protected. So free speech protects democracy. Democracy protects the rights of property. The rights of property are part of the rule of law. The four always come together. But in the European Union, one of them is taken away which undermines the other three. And that is the democratic issue. When you look at European competencies, there are things that, as a member of Parliament, you can no longer do. You can no longer seek that ancient right of redress of grievance for your constituent when it relates to agriculture, or not applicable to my constituents, it's landlocked, or fishing, or whether it's to do with the regulations, or whether it's to do with rules affecting the city, or whether it's to do with tariffs. All of this, ladies and gentlemen, is outside your democratic control. It's been passed up to a higher authority. And we need to remind ourselves why this matters. Because here we are, we're two and a bit years in, and we're looking at 800 pages, 585 pages of text. 68 pages. Do you know what 68 pages do? They list one by one all the regulations that are going to apply to Sammy, but not to me. 68 pages. They just list them by number. They're not writing out all the regulations. And then you're getting excited that it was only 68 pages of regulations. No, 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 no. It's 68 pages naming and listing the regulations, which are thousands and thousands of pages when you turn to the regulations themselves. Now, that is an undemocratic way of approaching it, but it is also a distraction from why we wanted to leave. We wanted to leave because we think, ladies and gentlemen, that we can do things better for ourselves. We believe... <coughs> In our understanding of society and of political life, we believe that individuals coming together into communities form society, and that from that society we get a nation state, a government that has legitimacy because it relates to the people who founded it. We have a conception of parliamentary democracy and sovereignty where Parliament has authority not falling from it on, on high, but given to it, ladies and gentlemen, by each and every one of you for a five-year term, returnable to you intact, 
at the end of that five-year term. We think that is how our society is created, how our nation is created, and that is where legitimacy lies. And that theory is great and powerful and important and inspires us because our nation's story is so intertwined with its development. But it's there for a purpose. It's not there because it's a good idea or because we've done it for hundreds of years. It's there because it leads to the most prosperous society that you can imagine. And we know that when we look around the world because we know that the societies that work best are the ones that have the systems that we have evolved, that they have in fact copied from us. We look at the United States, the richest country in the world, and we see that it is based on our governmental systems, the rights of property, the rule of law, freedom of speech, and democracy. And so we see historically that prosperity comes from these great things, from our core democratic values. And so when we look at leaving the European Union, we are banishing the idea, banishing the idea of managing decline, we are saying instead that through our own efforts, through our willingness to be entrepreneurs, to have novel ideas, to take risks and to implement what we want to do, we can make the standard of living of the British people better. And then we can look at the details of how we do that. It's been quoted before, there is not a country in the world that has traded freely that has ever got less prosperous from doing so. Because we believe that we should put the consumer first and that the price of goods for the consumer should be lower. Why? Why don't we protect inefficient producers instead? Well, the reason is that if consumers have better value, they've got more money to spend on other things. They've got money that they can save and that gets lent to business, encouraging more business. There is a virtuous circle that is created by reducing the cost of transactions and the starting point is opening up to free trade by removing tariffs. But it goes further than that, because the EU is equally in this business of managing decline. And therefore, what it wants to do is to regulate, to keep producers from the rest of the world out, to protect inefficient European producers. The regulations are not about health and safety. That is the excuse, the pretext for making lower cost producers unable to sell into European markets. And that makes all of us less well off. It means our own producers have a full sense of security and a protection that is not in the end going to make them prosperous and successful. And that if we can therefore remove tariffs and remove non-tariff barriers, we open ourselves up to improving all our standards of living, but we free ourselves not just from those outward-facing barriers, but inwardly we can be more innovative and more successful. If you look at the regulations in my own area, in financial services, what do they do? They are making the city of London less efficient. Not less, less efficient than Frankfurt or Paris, which in this really don't matter, but less efficient than New York and Singapore and Hong Kong. For we must compete with the world, not just with the small, narrow, outdated European system. So we want to look at those internal regulations that are affecting us, not just the barriers to trading with the world. We need to look at the regulations that affect the 87% of businesses that don't trade with the European Union, yet have to follow the regulations as if they did. But ultimately... Ladies and gentlemen, this is about whether or not you believe in yourselves. Do you think, as you sit here, that the decisions you make for yourselves will be better decisions than other people can make for you? Do you think that your economic decisions and your life decisions should be made by you or by these wise people on this panel? However good we are, you still make better decisions for yourselves and just think we could be European commissioners. You, you know that it is in your hands to succeed. We know it's in our nation's hands to succeed. We are taking this wonderful, this exciting, this generational opportunity to take back control, not because we simply believe it as a matter of dogma, but because we know it will make us more prosperous, stronger, and more successful in generations to come.
That is the prize. It is so exciting in all the discussions on the 585 pages. Do not forget that taking back control is about doing things better, succeeding, and prospering. Thank you.